It's been a rough couple of weeks as we fight the surge of COVID because of the Omicron variant, right? There are some glimmers of hope, though, right? So as you heard, New York Governor Kathy Hochul just said, in New York City especially. But this morning, we're zeroing in on New Jersey across the Hudson. The Garden State still seeing roughly 20,000 cases a day. Hospitalization rates, they're higher than ever than we've seen in this pandemic. There is no statewide remote option for schools, but just about 20% of schools have decided to keep students home for virtual learning in the first few weeks of the year. But just like Governor Kathy Hochul, Governor Phil Murphy says there is reason to stay positive, everybody. Uh, the spot positivity rate is still over 30%, but the rate of transmission has started to come down. I think that's a little bit of early signs of hopefully some some better moments and better days. So to get a clearer picture of where we stand right now and what we can expect in the next few weeks to come, we are going on the record this morning with New Jersey Health Commissioner Judy Persichilli. And Commissioner is joining me now. So good morning to you and thanks for being here on Pick Some Politics. Good to have you. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. So, Commissioner, I want to begin with where the pandemic stands right now in New Jersey, right? We're seeing a slight decline in cases in New York City. That is a good sign. How are things faring in New Jersey? Are we on the other side of that mountain when it comes to the Omicron variant? Well, we're staying very vigilant. We hope we're on the other side of that mountain. Right now, um, I, you know, four weeks ago, we were seeing 39,000 uh, cases um, a day. Uh, we're down to about 20,000, 20, 23,000 cases a day, uh, which shows some flattening, some moderating of the cases. Mm -hmm. But more importantly is our hospitalizations. Yeah. Uh, we were over 6,000 um, hospitalizations on a daily basis. Uh, we've dipped to about, um, on average, we'll be seeing, you know, 5,800, 5,700. Okay. And that's, that's a good sign. Because uh, hospitalizations are really the uh, metric that we look at right. um, very carefully. Right, but some of those numbers still remain high to the average person who may hear them, right? So last week, Governor Phil Murphy actually decided to reinstate the public health emergency. So what does the public health emergency status mean? What can a governor do with that? Well, the public health emergency actually gives us regulatory authority to have rapid response to what we're seeing with this changing virus. So if we have to move vaccines around or maybe some of the new uh, antivirals and the, the monoclonal antibodies, if we have to uh, change uh, any data usage uh, mm -hmm. requirements, uh, making sure that we immediately put up on our website in a transparent manner uh, what the public should see. Uh, it also allows us to set up contact tracing and right. testing sites and respond immediately with the public health mitigation efforts. Uh, to help stem uh, the the uh, the trajectory of the disease. Right. Now, now, the governor does frequently remind everybody to wear a mask, right, and to get those vaccinations and get boosted, more importantly, as well, if you've already had your two shots, but does stop short of any restrictions or mandates this go around with Omicron. Why? There are other cities that have taken it upon themselves to bring back some mask mandates, specifically indoors. Do you see that as necessary here? Well, right now, we really do believe that um, moving these decisions closer to the people that are ha going to have to live with them, maybe for a longer period of time than we realized, is the most important way to go. So as far as masking is concerned, you know we feel very uh, strongly that masking in school is very important mm -hmm. to keep kids in school uh, safely. Because uh, we know that uh, many of the kids cannot get vaccinated if they're on. A, we have about 520,000 children that are not eligible to be vaccinated, and they're under under five. But they're they're mixing with kids in school uh, that may be having exposures in in the school system. So we really want to keep kids in school, keep those masks on. We do mask. We do know that masks are effective. Yeah, they yeah. are effective in protecting you. And since we're as talking about and since, well, since we're talking about mask commission, let me stay on that topic for a second, because there are a lot of reminders to wear them. But what kind of masks are you recommending right now? Right. We're hearing a lot of back and forth about cloth versus KN95. What do you say? Most importantly, it's a tight fitting mask. And we do find in terms of comfort and tight fitting um, KN95s are the ones that the public feel the most comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is to make sure that we have masks for individuals that they feel comfortable with and will wear. The K, uh, KN95s are comfortable masks. Yeah. They're tight around the face. 
and under the chin. Uh, they uh, have a guard here for uh, to cover up your nose, and uh, they're quite effective. Yeah. We do know that just a cloth mask is not effective. Good. We knew that we know that surgical masks are still effective. Mm -hmm. And especially if you double mask with a surgical mask. Understood. I so to... the KN95s, we also know the KF95s right. are comfortable and tight fitting. Okay. Uh, and, you know, the bottom line is the tighter the mask, the better the, better the protection. Uh, I want to get in two more things here. President Biden announcing this week that military aid would go to certain states, including New Jersey, University Hospital in Newark. So how specifically will this help University Hospital? Well, University Hospital in Newark, uh, in, in, in a very densely populated, hard-hit uh, municipality, is not only seeing uh, many um, high uh, levels of individuals in the hospital uh, with COVID, uh, but they're also seeing a significantly high number of their staff uh, out ill. Uh, you do know when you're seeing positivity rates of 30 percent, that 30 percent of your own workforce yeah. may be sick at any one uh, given time. So they are the combination of that calls uh, for them to get additional help. The uh, help that they're getting will not only be uh, some clinical expertise yeah. that will be yeah. able to move to the bedside, but also to help with all the support services to triage patients to right. Uh, support uh, patients in their day-to-day -day activities important, in the hospital. Really important. And I only have a minute left here, Commissioner. And this is a huge topic for so many parents and teachers. 20% of New Jersey schools are remote right now. You said 520,000 kids not eligible to get vaccinated. Many schools not doing the remote option. Why not? You know, if, if so many kids are not vaccinated right now, why not push for a more remote option right now until the surge declines? You know, we're learning every day about this virus. And if we don't learn lessons about what it's been like, then shame on us. And the one thing we learned is that kids need to be in school. Yep. The socialization is so important to the kids. The way they learn is so important to the kids. And it's important to kids no matter where they come from, whether they're from urban environments or suburban environments. And we need as much as possible keep kids in school uh, as much as we can safely so that that learning loss that we know we had last year mm -hmm. does not reoccur. So the most important thing we can do is keep our schools open. Right. I appreciate the fact that in a high transmission and a high risk community, people are concerned about sending kids to school, but we're finding that our outbreaks in school uh, are not as significant as you can imagine. We have over 3,000 school buildings, mm -hmm. and many of them are open, and the outbreaks are uh, de minimis as compared to the number of schools that we have. All right. Good information here, and I appreciate you. This is your first appearance on Picks and Politics. You're welcome back, because I'm sure we're going to be talking about this throughout the rest of this year. Hopefully, we're on the decline here. But Commissioner Judy Persichelli from New Jersey, thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much.